In this video, we'll show how to add custom validation on Django form fields. So let's first look at the view because that's where it all starts. We have a definition for contact underscore page. It takes in a request. This is a view again. We say the variable is contact underscore form. This contact form is actually coming from forms.py. We'll get to that in a minute. So we're importing it here in our view. And then we're saying request.post or none. So the idea behind that is if somebody submits this form data, we want to either get that post data. And that's what actually what this is asking for. So if I'll just show the parameters here, data equals and then none by default. But if the request.post has data, we want it. So then we take this information, we put it in our context. We say form is the key and contact form is the value. So from there we say if contact form is valid, meaning everything submitted correctly, we're not doing anything with it in this example. We're just printing form is valid and then we're printing out contact form dot cleaned data. And lastly, we are returning an HTTP response redirect to the exact same page. Reason is, as it states here, it's just good web development practice. Now let's look at the forms.py. This is the contact form. We are importing forms from Django. And then from forms, we say forms.form. So we are subclassing forms.form and we are calling this class contact form. Inside contact form, we have three fields. This is full name, this is email, this is the message. You can also notice that these are using widgets and we are changing the class to make these bootstrap classes. That way they are styled more nicely. Now, when we are talking about how to add custom validation on Django form fields, what we want to do is use practical examples. So I'm going to show you a practical example, hopefully now. Um, there, is, there is this page, let me open it up here on GitHub, and it has a list of disposable email address providers. Now, I took this list, I put the file here, I just, I actually didn't know where to put it, still learning Django myself, but disposable email providers.txt is where this is showing up for now in this example. And so what I wanna do is basically read this list of providers because we don't want people that are going to just use disposable email addresses to contact us, right? So you might be wondering, well, how could we block a list of people that are using these disposable email addresses? And here is the solution. So what you could do is this would happen only on the email field. We want validation to check and see if any of these providers here, like a big one is Mailinator, you know, uh, if Mailinator, if anyone from Mailinator tries to submit something like john at mailinator.com, we don't want to let that come through. So how would you block all of these? That's what I'm going to show you now. So let's start out by just understanding that we can type def clean, and then we add an underscore. Look what PyCharm brought up, clean email, clean full name, and clean message. That might be cool and also confusing to you, so that's when you head on over to the documentation here and you'll see this part. The clean underscore field name method is called on a form subclass. That's what this is here. Where the field name is replaced with the name of the form field attribute. So that's talking about in the actual HTML. So if we look at full name here, let's inspect this. The name is full underscore name and that's not really a big surprise. Uh, then the email is going to be email, since it's only one word, we'll inspect that. And yes, in fact, the name is email. So it would be clean underscore email, so that's the field name. It passes in self. Now what we want to do is we want to say email equals, and this is we, where we want to get the cleaned data from the form, self.cleaned 
data dot get because clean data is like a dictionary. It might actually be a dictionary. Let's print out cleaned data. We will print type self dot cleaned data just so we can see. And what we're getting is the email. So we get that we get that email address. Now what we want to do is also load our list of disposable email addresses we want to block. So let's just say with open disposable email providers.txt. Read it as we'll call this just call it F for file usually. We'll say black list equals f dot read dot split lines. That's one of my favorite ways to read a file and split it all at the same time to make a list. So now we should have blacklist. So now the logic is for disposable email in blacklist. What we want to do is say if disposable email is in the email because the email will be a string. So we're searching for a string within a string. Then we want to raise forms dot validation error. And here's where you can give it a message. We could say, you're trying to spam me with, and then we could do percent %s here. You could also use dot .format if you want, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. And then we'll say disposable email. Okay, and then the last thing to do is return email. All right, now let's see what this looks like. Let's go here. Let's refresh this page. And let's see what a successful form looks like. So Jared, Jared at gmail.com. Hi, I'm friendly. Submit. Okay, so it, it says that this is not found. So what we do is we just say e-commerce slash disposable email providers. Now let's let that load. Let's try that again. And it went through. And it also printed off form is valid. We can also see class dict. So dictionary. So cleaned data is a Python dictionary. And then this is what it actually looks like. Okay. But what if what if we wanted to be somebody from this email address here? I just picked it randomly. I could pick literally any one of these and it should work. So I will say Jared. I'll say Jared at that. I'm a spammer. We hit submit. And it says you're trying to spam me with that domain. So this is one practical example on of how you might use custom validation on Django form fields. I wanted to give you another example because this example here operates on a specific field. In this case, it's the email field. But what if you wanted to compare two different fields? So that's when you would say def clean instead of clean and then underscore and then the field. So what we're going to do is we're gonna just comment out these fields here. We're gonna uncomment these here. We have, well, actually let's keep email and let's uncomment first name. And then let's just say pass and I'll show you the field or I'll show you the form now. So this is what the form will look like. Email, password, and password again. So a very common use case, you want somebody to enter a password and then validate it by entering it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we will say, we want to get the cleaned data first. So we're going to say cleaned data equals, and this is where you put super and dot clean. We want to call this first because we want everything that clean can do by default, but then we just want to add 
additional validation to it. So from here, we could just say p1 equals cleaned data dot get. We could say password first, and then p2 equals clean data dot get password again. Okay, so those will be those will be password strings. Now what we want to do is compare them and see if they're equal. So we'll just say if p1 does not equal p2, we want to do the same thing. Raise uh, forms dot validation error your passwords don't match. Okay, and then we want to return cleaned data. Okay, pretty simple. Simple if you know how to do it, that is. So let's refresh this. Let's see a good example. Jared at G, it doesn't even matter. We could just do this dot com, ABC, ABC. So this is a good example. So it's submitted, we see this form is valid, everything is great, right? Okay, so now let's do another one. We'll say jared at whatever.com, we'll say abc, abc, d. So these are not valid. We should see validation errors showing up on the Django form fields. There we go. Your passwords don't match. So that is, that is adding custom validation to Django form fields using the clean method on your form and also using the clean underscore field name. Hopefully this video was helpful. I know it will be for me when I forget all this in the future.